The remaining GOP candidates are making their last pitch to voters. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is hoping that he can secure a win in the Hawkeye State after picking up a major endorsement from prominent evangelical leader Bob Vanderplatz. He's a key figure in Iowa politics and is also the president and CEO of the Family Leader, a socially conservative organization in Iowa. He's endorsed several other GOP candidates who have gone on to win the caucus, including Mike Huckabee in 2008, Rick Santorum in 2012, and Ted Cruz in 2016. Many consider him a kingmaker when it comes to Iowa politics. And Bob joins Top Story Live tonight. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. I, I know this is not going to have a major repercussion, major repercussions in Iowa, but, but what is your reaction? to Governor Chris Christie dropping out? Well, Governor Christie was in the race the entire time, not really to be president. I said that right off the bat. Uh, he was there just to stop Donald Trump from ever becoming president again. But I do think that hot mic moment with Chris Christie uh, is kind of out of the mouth, the heart speaks. So when he says that uh, Nikki's not up for this job or she's going to get smoked, and the people are looking for a clear alternative to Donald Trump, I think that that's where they start breaking again for Ron DeSantis. I think DeSantis is going to have a very good night, Tom, on Monday night. Um, you have a piece that you wrote in the Des Moines Register, an op-ed titled, Caucusing for Ron DeSantis is a good way to be a friend to Donald Trump. In it, you say Iowans choosing DeSantis on caucus night January 15th. We will launch a candidate who can win not just the primary, but the presidency as well. Why are you supporting Ron DeSantis? Well, first of all, he caught my attention in his landslide election in 2022, and he won in demographics that we haven't won in, and he won after being a bold and courageous leader, taking on COVID, taking on the wokeness in the schools and in big business. Uh, he's done a lot of good things that conservatives have been waiting for a candidate like this for a long time. So not only can he win, he can lead on day one, he can lead for two terms. And that's why I tell people, I've been a friend to Trump for, for a dozen years. This is not against Donald Trump. This is for the future of this country and for the next generation. And that's why I endorse Ron DeSantis. Well, Bob, I want to ask you about that, right? In that same piece, you also say, quote, I want to put this up here for our viewers. I met Donald Trump, like you just said, in Trump Tower in New York City 12 years ago. Immediately, we struck up a friendship that went beyond presidential politics. While I voted for the former president in 2016 and again in 2020, I've never endorsed him. Now, in 2024, I remain a friend to him while endorsing Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. But when you made your announcement you were endorsing Ron DeSantis, Trump posted this on Truth Social. He didn't really sound like your friend. He wrote, Bob Vanderplatz, the former high school accountant from Iowa, will do anything to win something which he hasn't done in many years. He's more known for scamming candidates than he is for victory. But now he's going around using disinformation from the campaign, from the champions of the art, the Democrats, I don't believe anything Bob Vanderplatt says. Anyone who would take $95,000 and then endorse a candidate who is going nowhere is not what elections are all about. He was talking about money given to you by the DeSantis campaign and a super PAC and, and others aligned with DeSantis. So you're a prominent member of the GOP, right? As we said there in the introduction, you're a kingmaker. A lot of people believe that in Iowa. Why are you still calling former President Trump your friend when he says these terrible things about you in public? Well, first of all, I'm a friend to him. Well, regardless of what he does to me, I'll be a friend to him. And the book of Proverbs in the scripture says you can trust the wounds of a friend. And so what I'm doing is, again, I'm being a friend to him while I'm endorsing Ron DeSantis. And there are things I know Donald Trump. And Donald Trump's a New York street fighter. This is how he plays. He takes your strength. He tries to make it your weakness. Donald Trump knows better than anybody that my endorsement never has been and never will be for sale. And so what he wants to do is he wants to attack that. But that's okay. Ron DeSantis has been proven to be a leader. This isn't about me. It's about the future of the country. And it's about the future of the next generation. And I think Ron DeSantis is the candidate for such a time as this. And I think it's why Governor Reynolds has also endorsed him, which was a historic endorsement. And I think it sets him up after all the time he spent in Iowa. He's built a great organization. Then on January 15, when the high is supposed to be a negative two, I think his organization turns out, and I think he's going to have a good night on Monday night. I'm going to ask you about that in a moment, but I, I do kind of sort of want to hone in on this because from my observations and a lot of people watching this race, it, it seems like people who want to beat Donald Trump still say they love Donald Trump, 
but but they, they got to have somebody else. Even in this sort of endorsement, which you've given Ron DeSantis, which we all know about, and this op-ed, you're still saying Donald Trump's your friend. And it sounds like you'd be okay if Donald Trump was your president again, but you're still trying to get Ron DeSantis to win. Isn't that the problem with a campaign, right? Because you're almost confusing voters. You're giving them a mixed message. No, I don't think it's a problem at all. Matter of fact, I think we need to raise to a higher standard in this country. My dad, who served in World War II, he told me a long time ago, Bob, if the best you have to do is tear somebody down to build yourself up, you don't deserve to win an office. You don't deserve to be in that position. And that's why I think, you know, we have a higher standard here at the family leader. I think Governor DeSantis has a higher standard with his campaign. It's not about tearing other people down. It's about giving America a real choice and somebody that's proven to be a leader. So Ron DeSantis has got tremendous credentials from serving in the military to being one of the best governors in the country. And I think he would do the same thing for this country. You know, Bob, I wanted to have you on because of your history recently with the, the GOP caucuses in Iowa, right? Evangelicals, they can break late. They can break together. We saw that with Huckabee. We saw that with Santorum. You can argue we saw that with Senator Ted Cruz. All people you, you endorsed, right? Why do you think that vote is going to go to Governor DeSantis on Monday? Well, I think what it is, when I talk to our base, uh, again, they're very complimentary to the former president. All the things he did from appointing three Supreme Court justices, moving the embassy to Jerusalem, the Abraham Accords, standing up for religious liberty. There's a lot of things he did that they're excited about. But in the same breath, they say, but I believe we need to win in 2024. And Vivek Ramaswamy is uh, running around the state of Iowa telling people, open your eyes. The system, Governor Chris Christie, others, they're never going to let Donald Trump get close to that White House again. So you need to choose an alternative. And I believe the alternative is Ron DeSantis. And I believe, Tom, that Iowa will have done its job if we give America a choice. And I believe that choice is going to come out. That's Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. And I think New Hampshire is going to take our cue as well, and probably a cue from Chris Christie that uh, Nikki Haley, while we may like her, she's just not up for the job. This is going to be between DeSantis and Trump going forward. Bob, finally, how do you explain uh, to voters, and maybe to us reporters as well, what happened to Governor Ron DeSantis, right? Because there was a point about a year ago where he was the front runner in this race. He was doing so well in Iowa, and then he sort of has come down ever since then. And now we're less than a week away, and Trump is, you know, just an ultra front runner at this point. What happened to Governor DeSantis' campaign, do you think? Well, I think a couple of things. One is Governor DeSantis, when he was running for re-election, the whole country was honed, on his, uh, honed into his re-election. And then he won in a massive fashion. He had a great re-election night speech. And all the attention was on him. And everybody was saying, you know, this guy could be and should be the next president. And then what happened, Donald Trump was kind of out of the picture. But then Trump started having indictment after indictment after indictment. And that was almost like a super PAC for Trump. That elevated him again because what happened, his supporters said, we're going to rally around him because if the government's going to be weaponized against him, it's weaponized against us. But that said, Ron DeSantis has done the Iowa caucuses the old-fashioned way. He's gotten a lot of key endorsements. So the most important one is that of Governor Kim Reynolds. He's got a bunch of legislative endorsements. He's got 120 county chairs for 99 counties, 1,600 precinct captains. That's what it takes to win an Iowa caucus, especially on a cold winter's night. That's why my pulse does not match up with the polls, and I'm very optimistic and bullish on Ron DeSantis' chances uh, on January 15th. Bob, we're going to leave it there. We thank you so much for your time coming on Top Story. We know you're busy, especially during this time. We look forward to talking to you in the future. All right. God bless, Tom.